How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in today's video we're going to be covering the ultimate FPS increase guide for Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 2. In this video we're going to be bringing you the brand new revamped settings going through everything you need to know, set and apply on your PC from game settings to other alternative optimizations in which you can apply to get the best FPS possible in your machine on the latest updates of Fortnite. Whether you're running on a low-end machine all the way up to the latest and greatest in gaming hardware, at the end of this guide you will be running at the best performance possible on your machine. As always if you do enjoy this video please do remember to leave a like and a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously. We're first of all going to be jumping into basic Windows settings, optimizations and updates which you should apply for the best performance possible on your machine. It's also worth noting that everything shown in this video is 100% reversible if you decide you don't like any of these settings or wish to change them back. We're first of all going to navigate down to the bottom left hand side, type in game space mode, selecting Windows game mode settings, turning on game mode and exiting out. We can follow up that step by navigating to the bottom left once again, clicking on the Windows button, this time typing in GPU space settings and selecting the graphics settings tab. If you do have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling with inside of here, this is definitely recommended to have switched on for the best performance possible on your machine. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in power space plan, click on edit power plan. Inside of this section, navigate to the power options tab at the top. With inside of here, navigate down to show additional plans. You'll then be able to see all plans available on your PC. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using the high performance power plan. And for the most part, that is the power plan in which I would recommend. Once you've found the power plan you're going to be using, make sure that the dot to the left hand side of this has been selected then exit out. Next up for those of you running on an AMD Ryzen based CPU regardless of how old or new the CPU is you want to make sure that your Ryzen chipset drivers are up to date for the most optimal performance and necessary security updates to keep your PC secure. For this navigate inside of the description down below to the amd.com slash support channel to navigate on the left hand side to chipsets AM4 then you need to select the motherboard chipset in which you are using. You may have to refer to your computer documentation if you're not sure but for me that's going to be B550. I did select submit. Select the version of Windows in which you are using, find the AMD chipset driver at the top, then select download. If your machine is currently outdated, you'll then be brought over to this page where you can select all of the options you may want to install. I would recommend keeping all of them, navigating to the bottom right, then selecting install. We can now move over to optimizing the GPU for the game. Regardless of whether you're running on an Nvidia or AMD Radeon based GPU, you first of all want to ensure that you're running on the latest or one of the latest GPU drivers available for your system. Both AMD Radeon and Nvidia drivers will be found linked in the description down below. Follow the on-screen prompts and download the latest driver and install the latest driver for your GPU. When installing your latest GPU driver for your system, it is definitely recommended to check out the video on the screen now, or linked in the description down below, which will show you how to do a proper, clean installation of a GPU driver, and for NVIDIA drivers, even debloat them. For NVIDIA users, you first want to navigate onto your desktop, right click, and open up inside of the NVIDIA control panel. Start by navigating to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview, and ensure that the middle option titled use the advanced 3D image settings has been selected. Once that's done, select apply, then navigate over to the left hand side to manage 3D settings. The main and most important new option we're going to be using inside of the NVIDIA control panel for every single person watching is the brand new image scaling option. This will enable NVIDIA image scaling or NIS. This is an alternative to NVIDIA DLSS but you can use this on practically any NVIDIA GPU which supports the latest drivers. From high end to low end you definitely want to have this setting set up as we can set lower end resolutions with inside of our game and have them upscale and look fantastic compared to what they would look like without this. Head down to image scaling, go to the drop down menu, set this to on and you can set your sharpen factor to anything you wish to do so. I personally like 30% and you can also choose to have the overlay indicator which will display a small overlay on the top left hand side to show you if NAS is working. Select OK and for the best performance possible change your texture filtering quality off of quality and set this to high performance. For all other NVIDIA settings you can check out the ultimate NVIDIA control panel settings guide on the channel but for now we're going to be exiting out as that has been set up. Before closing out of the GPU optimizations for Fortnite I'm also going to be forcing resizable bar support for Fortnite with inside of NVIDIA GPUs. Now you can only use this if your NVIDIA GPU does support rebar and if you'd like to see how to do this in a separate video you can check out the video on screen now also linked in the description down below anywhere from 5 to 20 percent depending on your system specs and GPU. We can now jump into the game specific optimizations starting with the Epic Games launcher. Head over to library, find Fortnite with inside of here, go to the three dots to the bottom right hand side, click on this setting then head up to options. For most of you watching this video you'll more than likely see the high resolution text just setting enabled with inside of here. If you aren't using the high res textures or epic textures with inside of the game, turn this option off and you'll be able to save yourself anywhere from 10 to 7.5 gig of space in your game. There'll be a small update for your game as it removes the extra files and you're then good to go. 
Once you've booted into the game, we need to set up a few quick basic settings. Start by navigating to the top left hand side to the three lines. Inside of here, navigate down to your settings bar. To start off, we need to set our window mode over to full screen. You shouldn't be using anything else for Fortnite because this will give you the best performance and lowest level of input latency possible. We're going to be skipping resolution for now as we'll be coming back to this at the end of our settings. Frame rate limit can be set to anything you wish to have if you want a frame rate cap, but I'm going to be sticking with unlimited because I want the lowest level of input latency possible. Brightness, user interface, colorblind and colorblind strength are all complete personal preference. Next up is 3D resolution. Have this set to 100% for now because we're not going to be changing this until the end. For those of you on low end, medium end or even high end systems, I would recommend setting your view distance to far. Reason for this being is because you may actually notice that you get a lot less stutter. Textures should be set to match your system spec. So if you're on a low end system, go with low. Medium end system, go with medium. Or at the highest possible, I would go with high. I wouldn't bother with epic. Even though I'm on a high end system, I personally prefer to go on medium, but you should match this. Auto download and high res texture reminder should both be set to off. Shadows are going to come down to personal preference. If you want the best FPS possible on all machines, I would definitely recommend going with off, but if you don't like how the visuals of Shadows off looks, go with medium at the highest. Anti-aliasing, I'm personally going to recommend turning this off because we're going to be changing our resolution later and potentially setting up anti-aliasing later on as well. Effects quality is going to be set to low or medium at the highest. Post-processing quality is going to be set to low, but if you do want a nicer looking game, medium is also recommended. V-Sync should be switched off. Motion blur should be switched off. Show FPS on. Rendering mode, we're going to come back to this at the end. Allow multi-threaded rendering on. Use GPU crash debugging off. Latency markers should be switched off. Nvidia reflex low latency. If you have a GTX based GPU, you'd go with an on plus boost. If you have an RTX GPU, go with on. DLSS, we're not going to be using this yet as we're going to be setting up NIS or RSR later on in this video. So once all of those settings have been set up and out of the way, we now need to first of all move over to API. DirectX 11 is a fantastic option for those of you running on medium to ultra high end systems and you want to have some of the nicer visual effects enabled. In my personal preference, if you do want the absolute best FPS possible, you would want to use the performance API, but this will hard lock out some of the visual features and will stop you from using shadows altogether. So if you are someone that plays with shadows off, I would definitely recommend going with the performance beta. If you're on a low-end system or a dated system, I would also recommend going with performance. DirectX 12, I wouldn't recommend at this point. Go to the bottom right-hand side and select apply. With that set up, go back to the main menu, be selecting creative, so we can boot into an environment where we can see all of our graphic settings live and adjust them on the fly. As you can see, I'm getting about 157 frames per second. Not all of the optimizations have been applied yet. This is also running at 4K on my monitor. We then need to set up NIS or RSR to be used with inside of the game. Press escape on your keyboard, navigate to your settings menu, go to settings once again, and we can now start by changing the in-game resolution. I am currently using 2160p or 4K. Because I've set up NIS or RSR on my AMD system, any resolution I set lower than my monitor's native or maximum resolution will be upscaled by either NIS or RSR depending if you're using an NVIDIA or Radeon GPU. So I can start by navigating down to 1836p, selecting apply. I can now see on the top left hand side my NIS logo has turned to green meaning that it's on. AMD users can press Alt and R on their keyboard to check if their status is working, booting back with inside of the game, and I've roughly achieved a 25 to 30 FPS gain just from going down by one setting. This still looks absolutely fantastic to me, I'm really happy with the visual fidelity, and I reckon I could actually go down a resolution or two more. I'm now going to be checking out 1440p upscaled to 4k. Heading back with inside of the game, and as you can now see, that one simple change has netted us up to 230 frames per second, up from 155. Even if you're running at 1440p natively, or even 1080p, you can still use these features and go down lower and lower and lower and find the settings which you're comfortable with with your personal preference. And you may want to actually adjust your anti-aliasing setting now because we've now lowered our resolution. So I'm going to be setting a medium anti-aliasing, going back with inside of the game, and now this looks incredibly smooth. Again, you can utilize DLSS with inside of the game if you are on an RTX based GPU, but in my personal preference I prefer to use NIS. It doesn't look as nice, but it's way more widely available, offers a higher performance improvement. Before closing out with the in-game optimization, we can then fine tune a few more settings inside of our game config file. For this, navigate down to your Windows button, type in percent local app data percent then press enter. Inside of this menu, scroll down to the F section, then navigate into Fortnite game, saved, config, Windows client, and double click on the game user settings.ini. There are a few changes we're going to make with inside of this text file, starting off with B show grass. Make sure this is set to false. If you do have NVIDIA Reflex available on your system and you are running on the performance mode, you may notice that the Reflex settings actually disappear. For those of you running on an NVIDIA graphics card which supports Reflex, you should definitely be using this. Set Latency Tweak 1 to True, then set Latency Tweak 2 to 2. Starting off by changing our shading quality to 1, 
global illumination quality to 1, reflection quality 1, and most of the other settings should be set up according to how you set them up in your game earlier. Then select save and exit out. Before we close out of the video, I'm going to be covering what is the most important optimization for any PC to get the best FPS possible on most games, especially Battle Royale titles like Fortnite. And this is BIOS optimizations. You could be using the absolute top of the line PC components with the best RAM possible, the best CPU, but if you've not gone into your BIOS or had someone do this for you and gone into your BIOS and set up all of the settings properly to enable all of the custom profiles you may have available to you, you could be losing out on a ton of performance from not setting up anything with inside of your BIOS. This section of the video is not a guide on how to enable these settings with inside of your BIOS, but more guidance as to what to research and look into to see what is available for your system, starting off with an all-core overclock. On both Intel and Ryzen CPUs, on Battle Royale and CPU heavy games, an all-core overclock will always outperform any boost algorithm such as Intel Turbo Boost or Precision Boost Overdrive from Ryzen CPUs. Next up is setting up and enabling your XMP or DOCP memory profile, and if you want to go one step further than that and seriously get those in insane FPS gains, look into manually tuning the memory timings of your RAM kit for some serious FPS improvements. For Ryzen CPU users, you could also look into disabling CPPC and CPPC preferred cores, as this can also introduce a latency improvement. And for those of you running on Ryzen on Windows 11, if you're experiencing drastic stuttering, you may want to disable the FTPM with inside of your motherboard BIOS, disable the software side TPM for Windows 11, which will be causing stuttering on most Ryzen systems currently if you are running on Windows Windows 11 with a Ryzen CPU. Also look into enabling resizable bar or SAM support on your GPU whether you're running on an AMD RX or a GTX RTX based GPU. That is just scratching the surface of BIOS optimizations but will lead to the most significant FPS improvements alongside setting up the proper in-game settings for your game. For a quick demonstration and example, this PC is currently running a 4770K, 16GB of DDR3 memory with a 1060 3GB GPU. Here is it running stock on the left hand side with no optimizations running the stock BIOS settings. On the right hand side we've got the optimizations showcased in this video, alongside full BIOS optimizations with our XMP memory profile set and an all core overclock applied. And there you guys have it, that is the ultimate FPS increase guide for Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 2. Again if you have enjoyed this video, please do consider leaving a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously and if you want to see how to get more performance out of your machine and optimize other games or just the machine in general consider checking out the videos on screen now.